All right, Bama Nation, we're here at the RAIN Training Center with Lou Polly. Lou Polly is going to be in our fights with the light heavyweight division against Mike Smith. So how are you doing today? Uh, a bit tired. We had hard sparring before this. Then I had rolling. I still have sprints after this and pad work. So busy day as usual, but it's a normal day at RAIN Training Center. Now are you training every day or do you take certain days off? We train, uh, I usually train every day whether I'm fighting or not. The only thing that changes is the intensity. So I think, I, like Randy Couture said, you can never get out of shape if you're always in shape. So Mark Munoz always tells us like, man, live in the gym, be in the gym. So I'm always here. And going with training, you are going up against Mike Smith. What do you know about him, first of all? Uh, I know he's an, he's an active duty military personnel. I know that he's a grappler mostly. Um, I know he has old man wrench turning mechanic strength because of his age. So, uh, I mean, that's about it. You know, I don't really know too much besides that. Maybe he's had uh, amateur boxing, I think, as well. But uh, that's about it, you know. But the little bit of information you know about him, has it changed the way you've trained yourself for this fight? Uh, not really. I mean, I don't really care about the opponent so much. It's just, I just think if you train everything, train hard, keep your mind straight, the fight will take care of itself. Um, you know, the ending's already written, so all I have to do is show up, pretty much. Uh, I never really worry about too many things, maybe specifics here and there, things that stay out of danger, places I want to take the fight, but no, I haven't really changed much. You know? So this is going to be your first fight inside our Bama USA cage. What can the fans expect fight night? <laughs> uh, small shorts. Uh, about 410 pounds of uh, big beef in the cage moving around. I, I should do well, you know. I'm expecting to be very uh, violent. I have a good aggressive style. I don't go to decision often. Uh, I'm a finisher by nature. I always try and finish fights, whether it's on the feet or on the ground. I'm always looking to finish, so the fans can expect an exciting fight. But it also takes two people to make a fight. So if he came to fight, the fans are going to get a show. If he didn't come to fight, you're going to see a track meet, I guess. With this one, you're saying how he's a grappler. Um, when you go into this fight, do you think that it's going to skew you in a certain way? Are you going to want to take it to a certain place? Or are you going to let him kind of lead that part and you just go with it? Uh, no, I always like to lead. Ask any girl I ever danced with. I always like to lead. Um, no, I, I, nobody's grappling scares me. I've trained with the best grapplers in the world. Uh, from everybody from Team Czech Matt to Brazilian top team to American top team. You know, we have pretty sick grapplers in our room. Heat on Gracie and the guys from Torrance come. Or I travel to L.A. You know, I've trained with Hamala. I've trained with so many good guys. It's just like, I don't fear anything, man. Like, I just don't. I, there's no reason to worry about stuff like that, you know. Like, I'll take the guy down. I'll feel like I can submit him or pass his guard or or whatever I want, you know? The only, it, it doesn't matter to me. He could have, Brett could have said, you're fighting Jesus tomorrow. I would have been like, oh, perfect, let's do it. You know, it's, that's just my attitude. Going into this fight, you've actually had a two year hiatus, but you haven't been exactly inactive in that time. What have you been doing? Well, I went to the Olympic Training Center. I went to the Greco Training Center. I also, uh, did the Ultimate Fighter in that time. I also went to Nova Uniao uh, Affiliate School to train Jiu Jitsu for a couple months. Um, I also trained with uh, some Dutch kickboxers for a couple months and then uh, did a little bit of coaching on the side and then came back to California. Dutch kickboxers, where was that at? Um, actually, I was in, I went to Florida. I traveled a lot. I actually went from Denver to North Carolina, back to Pennsylvania to wrestle with some guys from my old college then to Florida to do kickboxing with uh, some of the Dutch guys that were visiting for a couple weeks. And then my old Dutch uh, coach came down, we worked, and then I came back to California. Do you think that has prepared you for this fight for MMA? Uh, I think so, man. Like, people assume that because you haven't fought that you're not going to do anything but sit at home or not come to training. I haven't missed a day of training in that two years. You know, I've trained pretty consistently with high-level guys. Uh, guys who are going to the Olympics this year, I was training with Greco with a lot of them. 
Uh, two of my old friends made it to the Olympic team, so we got to get some work in, and it was, it was good. So I got to cover all my bases. I even went to Vegas for three days to do boxing. I went to wild card for a little bit to box. So it, I took advantage of my time off. I didn't sit idle, you know? Idle time is the devil's plaything, and uh, I, don't like, I don't like going down that path. You know, I see it. I see it a lot. Guys take time off, and all of a sudden they're fat, they have a kid, they get rusty, they don't like fighting as much, and then it's like, ah, I'm just going to be a slob and drink beer all day. So I, I just think about that, and I don't want that. Girls don't like big dudes, so I just stay felt. You look very good. Thanks. You look very good. Thanks. Just the tight shirt. And if you wear small, I found out if you wear like form-fitting, smaller shirts, chicks think you're attractive. It's working for you. Thanks. Thanks. I'm a girl. It's working for you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it's working it. for him. It really is. I just need the douchey affliction writing, that glittery stuff that guys wear. In like, pink. Right? At, yes. All the stuff I see at nightclubs, where the guys walk out pigeon-chested, like six-foot pigeons. Hitting on chicks all night, like, yeah, I'm a fighter. Look at my affliction shirt. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I have one too, but it's in white. But you're a girl. Sorry I know. That's true. It's no problem. As long as it's okay with me having an affliction oh, shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay. fine. Girls can wear them. We're still on good terms? Yes, for now. All right, for now. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right, well, going into this one, is there any sponsors that you want to give a shout out to or any of the fans or supporters? Yeah, I'd really like to thank myself for training so hard and showing up to training every day because without myself, none of this would be possible. Um, no, nah, everybody at Rain Training Center for uh, helping me out, making me better. Um, Snack, uh, my number one supplement sponsor. Juggernaut Training System, the guys that do my strength and conditioning every week. I'm there every day. They're getting me stronger and bigger for some reason. Um, Project Discipline Gloves. Uh, Juan Herrera, Landon Evans, my two nutritionists and sprint coach. Um, Muhammad Owale, Danny Perez, my boxing coach. And uh, Mark Miller, the fight shark, who I work with for striking and the guys at the Boss Rooting Center were all the guys from uh, Golden Glory Train, which I am also now a member. So a lot of people putting their work in. It's a project. Well, in this whole process of you getting ready for MMA, this fight for Bad Beat 6. Is there a way that people can follow you? Do you have a Twitter account and Facebook account that they can follow you with? I sure the hell do. Uh, it's at Lou Polly. That's L-E-W-P-O-L-L-E-Y. Once again, at Lou Polly, L-E-W-P-O-L-E-Y. And I'm also on Facebook. I have a Facebook fan page as well. So just go over and click like. Hot ladies leave pictures and phone numbers and dirty comments. I really like those. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn. And Zephyr Training System is my company, so they can follow them too. You talk about your passion for fighting, but I just had a quick question. Why do you fight personally? Well, I just think I was picked to, like, I was born to do this. Like, some people naturally just have something they gravitate to. The day I started fighting, I just knew this is where I was supposed to be. I learned everything fast. Everything just meshed so well. Um, like, fighting actually chose me. It wasn't like like I went seeking it like there's so many guys with no background and they're like oh I see it on TV it's cool it wasn't like that it was just I've trained with Mark Coleman before and Kevin Randleman and they were like you should stop wrestling and do this I'm like ah no that's that's gay I don't want to do that no offense so then I went and did it and was just like ah I won and I was like okay whatever I'm going back to wrestling and then another guy who wrestles like no you should really do this stick to it I fought again won came back to wrestling, and then fought again. So I was 4-0, and and they're like, look, man, you're not making any money wrestling. You're like six months away from being on the Olympic ladder for like the guys they picked to even take serious. So then I was like, all right, 
I'm just gonna fight. That, it just feels better. I feel better as a person. Like I can handle life better. When I don't fight, I can't. I can't handle life. I'm not the same person. I'm not a good guy. I just. I'm edgy and moody. The kind of that I feel the way prisoners feel when they don't get laid during a life term. That that's how I feel. Like that. So imagine just a convict walking around on edge all the time just because of that one thing. That's how I am in real life. Well, you definitely are a firecracker personality, but I'm really glad that you're coming back to MMA. Let the edge off a little bit. So, especially <laughs> yeah. if it's something that makes you happy. So, we're very glad to have you back. No, thanks for the time. Yeah, it does make me happy. I'm I'm excited, man. I, I, I can't wait to put on a show, and I want to highlight real this guy just so people understand what I was doing that whole two years. Well, hopefully we can get on that. We will. All right. Well, Bama Nation, we're here again with Lou Polly. You can see him come July 13th, Bad Beat 6 at Commerce Casino. Thanks for talking with us. Oh, thanks for having me. Appreciate the time. Hi, I'm Lou Polly, and I'm a Bad Beat fighter.